indifference curves, utility functions, budget constraints. It all seems pretty theoretical, but now we're ready to make the magic happen. Now we get to answer the question, how can we model the way in which individuals actually make decisions? In these next few videos, we'll set out to answer this question a number of ways. First, in this lecture, we'll think conceptually about what's involved in maximizing utility subject to a budget constraint. In the next lecture, we use an example that gets to intuition. Then we'll use a graphical example to think about optimization before turning to a real world example. Finally, for those who are interested in the more mathematical side of things, there's a final optional video with a short numerical example. Remember the insight we learned in the first lecture. Economics is about constrained optimization. Now we have both pieces. We're optimizing utility subject to the constraint imposed by our budget. Constrained optimization involves a set of tools that forms the backbone for both how consumers and producers make decisions. We're approaching the topic from a number of different angles in this current unit, and we'll be returning to make use of these tools again and again as we move through the course. It turns out that constrained optimization can be a very difficult problem. Our utility function may be complicated, and perhaps our budget constraints complicated as well. And now we're supposed to figure out what combination of goods makes our utility as high as possible without exceeding our budget. Sounds like it could be tough. One way we could do this is by brute force. We could take your utility function and try every possible combination of pizza and cookies that you can afford to find out which one gives you the largest value for utility. In the example from the last lecture, this might be reasonable. Assuming you can't buy fractions of pizza slices or cookies, there aren't that many combinations of pizzas and cookies to try. But in the real world, this brute force approach is rarely feasible. There could be hundreds or thousands of possible combinations to try, and it would take forever to go through each one and evaluate your utility. So how do we make the magic happen? With one of the best tricks in the Economist toolkit, marginal analysis. Think of marginal analysis like a hill climbing game. Suppose I blindfold you and place you somewhere on a grassy hill. I know this sounds odd and perhaps a bit cruel, but bear with me for a moment. Your goal is to get to the top of the hill. The rule of the game is that you can walk as long as you want with your blindfold on. And you can take your blindfold off at any time to see if you're at the top. If you're at the top, you win. If not, I blindfold you again and place you at some other random spot on the hill. Now one strategy you could use is to take your blindfold off each time you get placed at a random spot on the hill to see if you're at the top. If you aren't, you put the blindfold back on, you place another random spot, and then you take the blindfold off to see if that spot is the top. If you stick with this strategy long enough, eventually you'll get lucky and be placed at the top. But this could take a long time. So what is a better way? What if I place you at a random spot on the hill and you step forward in some direction? If you feel you're going uphill with that step, then you know you're on the right path and you keep going. If you feel you're going downhill, you turn around and head the other way. With this strategy, you can just keep stepping up until the next step in that direction takes you down. At that point, you know you're at the top. The key insight here is that you didn't try to decide at each point whether you're at the top. Instead, you just asked whether the next step in some direction brought you closer or further from the top. And that is exactly what we do with utility maximization in economics. We don't evaluate every single data point to see if the utility is at the maximum. We ask whether purchasing and consuming the next unit of a good makes you better off or worse off. If it makes you better off, then you should purchase more and consume more. If it makes you worse off, you should purchase and consume less. By doing this over and over, you end up purchasing and consuming the amount that maximizes your utility.